Hi guys, so I said that I'd make you a video today um, talking about a deep subject. I don't want to offend anybody for, for starters. Um, I don't want to upset anybody. Um, I don't want any name calling on this video. I want everyone just to be open minded and hopefully it helps uh, a few women who've been through the same things. So literally this video is about overcoming child abuse and um, rape and domestic violence and learning to come to terms with our own emotion and how to let go of the feeling of not being worth and then putting self-love back into ourselves in order to move forward with a happier future. Got them words out eventually. So first of all, um, let me just tell you a little bit about me. Um, from a young age, I was abused as a child from approximately nine years old. I remember the simple, well, I remember details such as the back room, the stars and moons, the gold stars and moons on the quilt, um, the abusers doing this, shh, um, a number of things I remember in detail. Uh, then I remember in my in my teens where I started to drink quite a lot, become an emotional mess, too scared to tell people what had happened to me. Used to use drink to try and block things out. Went on to be raped further a number of times. Um, carried on with mental health, end up in hospital um, with um, overdoses, self harming myself quite a number of times as well. I had to have a home support worker, which many people don't know about me. Um, when I was 18, 19, I think it was, I had a home support worker for a number of years. I struggled to come out of my house. Um, I had to have people who used to come out and help me organise my bills, my shopping, and just stuff, little things like that, because people don't realise how much being abused and having something traumatic like that done to you actually does affect your everyday life so in my teens then I went through rape uh, I carried on to go through um, binge drinking dating guys who just wanted to take advantage of me getting literally I was a target for predators because I was that broken one and us people who've been through traumatic experiences we seem to love deep and we seem to love too soon as well so when you get out of this on the other side, you start to be more careful. You start to notice dangerous things and red flags and things. And you seem to put more love on yourself and less love on other people who want one thing for it from you. Anyway, so after all that sort of stuff, I went through domestic violence, a number of um, relationships where I was getting beat. I was physically and mentally abused with domestic violence. Um, and it affected me in many ways where I hated myself. I can remember where I used to scratch myself till I bled. Um, I used to cry and make myself sick. I used to hide in the house. I remember one time I was rocking on my neck at the top of the stairs. And I remember one girl, um, who's, I've not seen her for a while, but she knows about this. She rung me up and she was like, stop what you're doing now. She knew what I was doing. Um, it was one of them things where you got that feeling inside you, it was hard to hide it. Um, poor mother, had to watch me through my teens being brung away in ambulances. And even though I'm over that now, I can still feel a pain inside myself where I can like, I feel like having a little cry that my family had to see these things. Um, but in order for me to stop this happening further, because some of it happened in the family, I don't want to put no names on people. I don't want to cause any trouble. I have confronted people. I've said what I've had to say. People have name called me. People have said I'm an attention seeker. People have called me a drama queen. I do not personally care what people call me. It was me who was who was been through it. And I am not sorry one bit for confronting people about what they've done. Because if anybody did that to my children, I wouldn't even like to think what would happen from there. But anyway... So overcoming these sort of things, what I started to do with after I'd been through all that sort of stuff, I started to notice that it come to the time where I didn't want to drink anymore. I didn't want to hide from my feelings anymore. I didn't want to be that broken person anymore. I wasn't getting anywhere in life. I felt like I was one step forward, but then I was going three steps back every time. I felt like I couldn't be loved properly because I kept creating problems in relationships and friendships. I lost a number of friends. Um, relationships never worked out. Um, to the point of 
sexual intercourse. Um, sometimes it would be where all of a sudden I'd have a flashback and I'd scream and I'd hit and I'd cry and I'd just say, get off me. And seeing a rapist face inside your head when you're being physical with your partner is not very nice. And not many people actually um, know about these things until they've been through it themselves. Um, getting to the point where you don't go to sleep because you see things happening to yourself in your sleep. Um, getting to the point where you have bed sweats and you wake up and, and your bed's drenched because you're sweating that bad in your sleep and having that many nightmares. You're losing a lot of weight from sweating, from not sleeping, which lack of sleep me means that you don't eat properly, which when you've got no sleep, no food inside yourself, lack of water and everything, it creates mental health, which help, which literally creates isolation, breakdowns, etc, etc. And yeah, I went in a mental hospital for three months. Um... Many people think, oh, well, she just went crazy, but I didn't just go crazy. These things happen to me over a period of time. Um, when you've been raped um, a number of times and raped where you was actually, uh, your child knows about it and your child actually had to do a police statement, that will play on your mind for the rest of your life unless you start speaking up about it. Because nobody will never know what it feels like to have their child cry to them and say that they think um, that hurts me. That's one thing, like, I'm all for, for speaking up about these things to help people. But when your daughter thinks it's her fault that her mum got raped, that hurts. It's not her fault um, and it wasn't my fault either. And people turn around and say things like, you shouldn't drink, you shouldn't dress in certain ways, you shouldn't do certain things. People know that rape is wrong. People know that um, child abuse is wrong. There's no, there's nothing that can justify raping somebody. Um, especially when it happens in your own home. By people who you're supposed to have known for a long time. So yeah, let's just get off that subject anyway, but... Um, I want to teach my children that this is never okay to happen to them and I want to teach them that if someone tries to do it to them that they stop it and they say no and no means no and if someone tries to do something that they have to take action because what comes after with child abuse, rape and domestic violence destroys your life. Um, I'm lucky that I'm alive. Um, I attempted suicide eight times in my teens and I got to the point where I disliked myself I hated myself, I didn't want to be alive anymore. I had loved ones around me who I loved deeply, but they just couldn't understand me. They couldn't understand the dreams, they couldn't understand why I was scared to go out. They, don't, they couldn't understand when I was walking home from the shop in the evening and it had only just become dark. Turning around all the time, looking over your shoulder and running home until you can't breathe because you're scared that somebody's gonna attack you. People don't understand these things. So yeah, anyway, um, after all these things happening, um, you'll find that a lot of things don't work out in life when you're still holding on to pain, and um, including relationships. You try to talk to your partner about what's going on in your mind when you're going through these things, especially if you're going through counselling. And I was particularly dating a man for a few years, and all I used to say, well, you don't want to have sex with me, it's not my fault that you got raped. No, it's not your fault that I got raped, but um, if you're a partner and someone who cares at me, it's your responsibility to be a little bit easy on me when I'm going through something like that. And because I got so much grief off him, I ended up actually being um, mentally abused at the same time, to the point where um, he tried to get me to take my life. And um, he used to make me cry and send him pictures of me in tears to prove that I loved him and sort of things like that. But anyway, after all that, I want all these women to know who've been through domestic violence, through rape and child abuse, that you can get through it. And even though there is parts that will always be at the core inside, like that just did to me there. There is a better life. So what I started to do was, I didn't want to live that life anymore. I needed to speak up about it. I even had situations when um, I was the actual uh, victim of a police investigation and the police officer turned around and said to me, these things don't need to be spoke about on Facebook. I will speak about things as much as I want. I am not scared of what anybody thinks. I do not care what police officers say. I do not care 
what anybody says. Rape is not okay, nor is bullying, nor is getting people jumping on bandwagons all over social media, trying to abuse you and cause you pain towards your family, nor is people following your children down the street and staring at them and making them feel in a way, nor are other children going up to your children at school and saying to them, your mum got raped. I had to deal with all that with my family and I now know why some people are scared to come forward about these things. I've first-hand witnessed these, all these sort of things, but still, it made me a stronger person. But still, I'm no longer bothered about what other people think. And ladies, I know how you feel. If you ever need to speak to me about these things, I know how you feel. So anyway, coming out of it, there is always a light at the end of the tunnel. Somebody always loves you. Even if it's that person who you spoke to on Facebook, you, get, you go through the same sort of things, you get a bond and you, you build each other up. You speak about things, and then you'll find that people come together and they start like discussing things that have happened in life. And everybody wants to help each other. A community as you and I, we're supposed to spread love to one another, not bring each other down. We're supposed to fight against evil and help each other heal. So literally by so many people thinking, oh, we need to not talk about it, it's spreading evil. The more you hide these things happening to people, it's allowing it to happen. The more you come forward and let people know it's not okay, the more that you put in a stop to it. Teach your children about these things. Teach them to say no. Don't hide the fact of these things happen every day. Do you know one in four women are raped? One in four women are raped. And speak to some women, six or seven times they've been raped in their lives and they've not even got halfway through their lives yet. So you get to the point, you're fed up of it. CBT is a very good way to um, speak about it. You've got to come to terms with your emotion. You've got to allow yourself to feel you've got to start noticing about like what makes you like outlash what makes you angry but don't allow yourself to hurt people because you're hurt when you feel that emotion coming out you need to sit and you need to think i'm not a victim i'm a victor i'm having a victory because i'm coming out of the other side do not feel sorry for yourself because the more you feel sorry for yourself the more you're going to keep stuck in the past feel sorry for them feel sorry for the people who've done that to you just know they are bad people. For them to think it's okay to do such things to people, it's them who needs help, not you. So you're about to change your life and you're about to live it as happy as you should be. Don't live in the past. It will destroy you. Also, isolation. Don't sit at home and think that people are judging you and that you can't speak up because that will destroy your life. Reach out to people. Go on groups about rape, like rape, domestic abuse, uh, child abuse survivors, speak to people, go out, meet people, make sure you do things in safe ways, make sure you speak to your family, make sure you speak to people who are going to support you, make sure anybody who, who's making you second guess your own thoughts while going through healing in these processes, you remove them, because there's certain people like, people don't want to know this stuff, people don't care, why are you telling people, you're crazy, remove these people, these people are putting negativity into your life. Your life needs positivity only in order to get over these sort of things. So um, anyway, I was hospitalised for three months through a trauma-induced breakdown. People thought, oh, she's just gone crazy. I didn't just go crazy. These things built up over time. So the more you keep things in, the longer it's going to affect you until, boom, your life's destroyed. I had to go through so many things for... Um, me to get over that it was really hard and because I'd been through a mental breakdown I then had to fight for my kids because the problem with society today is people think that when you've had a mental breakdown that you're not capable of looking after your children but it's bang out of order and it's wrong and after that happened to me not only did I fight I made sure that people were sacked in big organizations and big professions who tried to destroy my family because at the end of the day I didn't abuse myself I should have got support I shouldn't have been put into a corner and made to fight for my own life and for my own freedom, kept in a hospital against my will, crying out, asking for people to help me, having people turn against me because of what I'd been through from somebody else doing to me, put me in that position. But guess what? I don't, I'm not that person anymore. I don't reside there. I'm a better person now. I know who I am and I learned to love myself again. So anyway, there's days where you really hate yourself. Um, you change how you dress, you change how you look, you put loads of makeup on, you hide from the person that you are. Bit by bit, you need to start literally turning around and telling yourself every time you feel bad. I look good, actually. I started doing modelling after I'd been raped. 
people didn't understand. Uh, I went on a body, I went, I did a bodybuilding competition two weeks after our drug rate, um, and I went on stage in a thong wet bikini, and people were like, "Oh my God, she's such a liar." I don't care what people think. I did that for me. Do you know what? I was the winner of that show, even though I didn't get a trophy. I got a medal, but to get on stage two weeks after being raped was a big thing for me, and I did it, and I'm so proud of myself for that. So what I did was, while I was going through all the pain, which it was brutal, I set myself little challenges. I wanted to lose a bit of weight. I wanted to create self-love. I wanted to literally stop my mind from working overtime. I went out walking, eating healthy food while I was overcoming it because the more crap you put in your body, I tell this to people all the time, put chemicals in your body, it chemically unbalances your brain, which is um, associated to anxiety and depression. You've got to literally put filters on your life and start working on things bit by bit. Don't try to do everything at once, it won't work. Reach out for counselling, look at your diet, look at your support system, look at how you live, remove substance. Substance is only causing further pain. When you start drinking to try and get rid of your problems, you only create further problems. Reach out and get some help in them areas. But anyway, um, after all these things now, I just want people to know that I have come to terms with what's happened to me and guess what I'm not a victim I'm a survivor I just want you all to know ladies I hope this video has helped you a lot and I could have gone a bit more in depth but there's only so much you can do at once and uh, I will speak about things later on and I just want you to know there's always a light at the end of the tunnel and um, I've come out of the other side of abuse and uh, I could have been in a coffin six feet under with my family distraught for the rest of their lives because of my abusers won, but guess what? They didn't win. I did. So, um, yeah, keep doing you. Don't let nobody else destroy your mind and um, create a better life for yourself. And um, I feel your pain, ladies. Um, it does get better. Much love.